Good afternoon, family. Um, this is Trey McGriff again, um, founder, uh, executive director of the St. Odyssey Film Festival. And um, I didn't get a chance to chime in with you guys uh, yesterday. I mean, I, you know, my spirit is so full from um, the weekend of um, activities at the um, William and Louise Greaves seminar sponsored by Black Star Film Festival. What an empowering weekend it was. And um, I thought ending it with um, the legendary Haile Garima, legendary filmmaker, um, having him end uh, the festivities with such an empowering talk on what we need to do as filmmakers of color and um, uh, being truly independent and not being um, servants, um, so to speak, to the Hollywood slaves, uh, <laughs> it's hard to say Hollywood slave system, <laughs> but you know, in some respects, I know full filmmakers of color um, feel that way. Um, uh, Haile Garima has never, um, ever been a Hollywood filmmaker. He's been an independent filmmaker his whole career. And you're talking about a guy who started probably in the late 60s, early 70s. Um, he's 76 years old now, and he's still making films, still disrupting, still being, um, you know, the, uh, the Baba that he is. Um, but his talk was was so empowering and he dropped so many gems but the the biggest takeaway is that um, we have to reclaim um, the independent mindset um, of filmmaking because you have to understand he came up in an era where um, he looked at uh, filmmakers from all over the world. Um, he's highly uh, influenced by Japanese uh, filmmakers. Um, and, um, you know, when you look at, like, you know, the those wave of filmmakers that came out, came about in the, the 40s and the 50s and really doing independent stuff there, they... Um, didn't really have a desire to be part of the Hollywood system. And, you know, look, I'm not here to bash um, Hollywood. Um, let's face it, there are a lot of us who work within that system and are very uh, successful. So, um, but I, I think for him, um, I, and I don't even think he was... Uh, bashing Hollywood, so to speak. I think he said, he was saying, his biggest thing he was saying was that he never had a desire to be part of that machine. And that as filmmakers of color, we need to still hold on to um, an independent mindset in terms of how uh, films are executed. So, um, such great takeaways. And like I said, you know, Haile Garima, having him close out the, the uh, seminar was, was great. And just to have this seminar named after um, William Greaves. And <clears throat> truth be told, I have a William Greaves story um, for those who may not know, I graduated from the University of Buffalo and, um, in my senior year, 
um, I took an introduction to filmmaking course. Um, uh, this is when, uh, you know, film was still shot on film. So it was like eight mil. They, you know, they gave us eight millimeter cameras. And um, the University of Buffalo didn't have a film program per se, but they did have um, more film analysis or film studies um, programs. Um, you know, one of my favorite classes was a class called Blacks in Film. Um, and uh, it was uh, taught by uh, Professor James Pappas, who is uh, one of my biggest influences. And um, he's one of the reasons why I look at film, you know, um, critically the way I do. Um, uh, I learned a lot uh, from him from just taking those classes, he, he, you know. What he did was he taught us to look at film critically and um, to look at film and, and really um, acknowledge the social impact of, of film, um, Dr. James um, Pappas. And um, so in this film class, Blacks and Films, because um, he had Blacks and Films 1 and Blacks and Films 2, so... Um, you could take a class in both semesters. Um, we saw films like um, uh, The Original House Party, which was actually a thesis film by the Hudlin brothers before the more commercial uh, version with um, Kid and Play came out. We saw that film. Um, we saw Birth of a Nation, the original Birth of a Nation, the silent uh, movie. Uh, we saw uh, so-called black exploitation uh, movies and, and was able to, you know, critically analyze those films against um, the things that were happening in the world. Um, we saw uh, films from African um, filmmakers, uh, filmmakers like um, Usman. Um, so... You know, it was just a, a great experience, a learning experience. But um, we didn't have a, a filmmaking program. Uh, we just had, um, you know, that uh, introductory, introductory uh, introduction to film class. Well, anyway, so I took that class my last semester. I didn't finish the class because I was more uh, interested in um, getting out <laughs> uh, of school, um, and you know, I sort of just took that class, sort of like as a lock. I didn't even really need it as a um, credit, but uh, I didn't finish the class. But I remember when I finished, um, and I went back to uh, New York. Um, I was staying with my sister in the Bronx for a while, and um, um, I said, "You know what? I'm going to get a job at a film production company." Didn't know anything about film. <laughs> no real education beyond, you know, the analysis and, and study uh, of film. But I remember looking in the, a phone book and I saw William Greaves Productions. And I didn't know whether it was black owned or not. I just, it was almost like the first production company I saw in the yellow pages I was going to go and I was going to get a job. And so um, I arrive at the place, and it's in this real nondescript um, building. Um, and, and actually, the, the more I think about it, it, it probably was an apartment building. But I remember going up to the floor, and I'm walking down this long hall, and I'm like, okay, where is this place at? And then I finally I see a sign, you know, nondescript sign said William Greaves production and I knocked on the door and uh, a, a gentleman a black gentleman you know answered the door later on I found out that was him and um, he said may I help you and I said well you know I'm looking for a job you know and I want to work for a, a film production company and he looked at me and he said, well, 
do you have any experience? And I said, no, I don't have any experience. I said, I, I took an introductory introduction to film class. I didn't finish, but, you know. And see, I come from a, a, an era where um, you just, if you wanted something, and maybe that's just the hustle spirit of, you know, just being a native New Yorker. I mean, you know, you, you know, if you want a job, you go ask for a job. You know, you don't fill out any applications. You just look, I'm looking for a job, you know, uh, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, remember being as a kid, just hustling and, you know, somebody needs their, their lawn cut. You go, you know, look, I can cut your lawn for five dollars, whatever. So it was that kind of thing. That was the, the mindset. But, you know, he said, well, I don't have any um, openings. I, I run a very small operation. And I'm, you know, he opened the door and I'm looking and I'm like, OK, this is a production company. I'm looking for like I'm looking for cameras, lights, and I don't see none of that. And um, and he said, you know, I don't have anything available Um uh, but he said, I will say one thing. You you have a lot of cojones. Um, those who know Spanish know what cojones mean. And he said, whatever you do, he said, that will, uh, you will need that. That will take you very far in this business. Cojones. And then he just very slowly closed the door with me standing there. So I guess it was like, okay, I'm done with this guy. You know what I mean? Uh, but like I said, I didn't know who he was at the time. And it was years later that I was like, wow, I came face to face with a legendary uh, filmmaker. And this is before um, Spike Lee, you know, came on the scene or blew up. And, um, you know, so... Here was a guy, William Reeves, that was really one of the few black filmmakers. And he worked in a space, um, in the documentary space. Um, uh, he has a very legendary film. And I can't even pronounce it, so I'm not even going to try. It starts with an S. Um, but it was recently, um, not too long ago, discovered by Steven Sod Soderbergh, who... Um, discovered the film and um, I think he brought it to Criterion, uh, the film um, production company. And um, it's a classic film. I'll, I'll drop it, the title, um, in this post. Because like I said, I, I, I can't pronounce it. Um, you know, I don't want to embarrass myself. But, you know, it's, it's a classic film. Um, it became classic over time. But, um, yeah, this guy... William Graves is, is a legend, um, legendary filmmaker and one of the few African-American filmmakers that were working at that time. So um, I think it was very apropos that this um, seminar um, was uh, named after him. So kudos to uh, Black Star Film Festival for doing that. But um, um what a fantastic uh, weekend. I just wanted to get on here and um, give the, the Black Star Film Festival their flowers. Um, great job. So anyway, um, stay tuned for some announcements coming soon for the Santa uh, Film Festival. I'm going to be doing a lot of curation with um, different groups different organization, different events. So look out for that. Um, I'll be making some announcement probably within the next 30 days. So um, great talking with you guys as usual. Um, I don't do this enough, um, frankly. Um, I probably should start like a podcast or something or maybe a YouTube channel because um, I, don't, I don't do this enough. I don't, I don't get on camera and actually talk, um, you know, shoot my shot <laughs> and, and talk about film that much. Um, so I'm going to try to do uh, more of that and uh, do some interviews with um, 
you know, filmmakers, uh, you know, local filmmakers and also filmmakers you may know on the national level. So um, I'm going to uh, try to be more engaging with that. OK, so anyway, so I talked long enough. Um, I will talk to you guys soon. Um, enjoy the rest of your Monday and it's spring again. It's actually spring. That's a good thing. Take care. I'll talk to you later. Peace.